Okay. I think this might work. Gonna have to give it a try. Curious to see what happens when I'm shooting through the shade. It should be fine. It's usually fine with pictures. I don't know about with the camera. Hey, yeah, that looks okay. May have found a solution here. Solution to a problem y'all didn't even know was a thing. The camera keeps overheating. The sun is just unrelenting right now. It is absolutely frying everything that's out here. So I'm giving this umbrella doohickey a try to see if that'll keep the sun from cooking the can. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great, welcome to my mess. Lots of mess. Lots of mess. Everything just started happening all at once and well, here, here I am. This is what's going on. Some of the plants are going to be looking kind of thirsty in this garden tour. I just, I can't keep up. I watered about two hours ago and they're shriveling up again. It's very dry here right now. We have not been getting much rain. The air's dry, so it's just the plants are just, they're frying, they're cooking. Because of that, I actually haven't even moved. Excuse you, okay. Found a problem with the umbrella. Be a bit too much weight on the tripod. It just kind of, it wants to fall down. That's not gonna work. Screw it, I'll just hold it. It's what I usually end up doing anyways. The sun, it's cooking things. So uh, since I, I don't have as much shade out here as I used to because the maple tree got a huge prune, which it really needed. Neighbors removed all of their landscaping and trees on the other side of the yard where I used to bring the plants out to acclimate them. So I've been bringing the tropicals out from the garage in stages. And if anything needs treating, it's getting treated in the driveway and going back into the garage. And I'll be doing that for the next few weeks. Want to make sure that as the plants come out, they're coming out without any kinds of bugs on them. I want to get started off on the right foot here and just do it slowly and carefully. So there's still some big gaps. Why the Monstera is not over here yet. The sun still cook. It's... It's just, it's so intense. It's frying some of the plants. This is only getting morning sun. It's like 1030. I can tell, I mean, I should, I'll go ahead and move it. I can hang out with the McDowell, give that a prune. I had a big croton right here in front of it up until a couple hours ago, and that was giving it shade. Been doing a lot of moving around with the plants. This garden tour is going to be a little bit different. I feel like I said at the beginning of a lot of them. There's an entire side of the yard that I can't show because it would just be a huge spoiler for some exciting things that are going to be going on out here for the next few weeks. So potentially going to be shorter. I'll be doing my best to cover whatever needs a progress update and really just have a look at the plants and uh, see how they're doing, what I plan on doing, some things that I might change. There are a lot of things out here that I might change. Oh, and finally got an identification on these palms here. We can talk about that too. In the last video, I left off placing annuals around a lot of the plants and talking about some things I wanted to do. And I had to cut that video short because, you know, holiday weekend. And uh, what I did over here, got two of the pink, hot pink sun patients in here with an orange in the front. I have a Persian shield in the back on both sides as well, but they still have some growing to do before they'll peak up and anybody will really be able to see those. And then in the very back here, that is an Alocasia longiloba, which I do like, but I don't think it's going to work for this spot. They want to reach for the sun. It's more shady back there. And I had kind of thought that that might be an issue. Not a big deal. I think something that may go really well back there would be a cordelin for the casa. That's traditionally something I've put in these containers before. I like the way those look behind the nice ringed trunks on the Edenidia palm. I just have to find one that I like. They're very small this year. Have y'all noticed that at the nurseries? Not seeing the great big beautiful ones like have been in years past. They're still the same size nursery containers, but they're like, you know, a foot or so tall. And I just, I'm not, I'm not into that. There were a surprising amount of caladiums down in this container. I had just forgotten that I planted that I didn't notice until I started to dig some stuff up and get these annuals placed down in there. I went ahead and I just left them. I figure that's fine. They'll do their thing. There's also a clump of curcumas down in there that were planted last year that I think I'll probably pull up because they're right here and they're going to grow up in the midst of these two. And I, don't know, I think that'll just look odd and silly. So I think I'm going to pull those up and plant them over here. Well, no, we'll go over there in a minute <laughs> and I'll show you by the queen palm. Have some red cone gingers 
planted up in the containers on each side of the Adenidia palm. They're adjusting the sun. Like I said, it is just intense and the air is so, so, so dry. I actually, after I planted these about a week later, I think I planted these about two, two and a half weeks ago, I pulled some of the filler soil out and I mixed in some of that cellulose material, those little crystals that will absorb water. And I put it back in there just because the gingers, they're not going to take much drying, especially in the summer heat with the sun. And that shouldn't be a problem all summer long either. Once actual summer gets here, the angle of the sun starts to shift. It's going to start going lower and lower and lower in the sky. And then things will be slightly more shaded over here. So it's really just for like the next three to four weeks that they'll be getting this like cooking <laughs> action on them. And there's some adjusting that they're doing as well. The temperatures have been very odd. Well, kind of odd, right? It's spring, so weather is just weird in the springtime, especially here in St. Louis. That's where I am. It's on 6A, 6B, in the 40s one day, and then in the upper 80s the next day, and that doesn't always sit well <laughs> with the tropicals, especially a lot of the gingers and really the heliconias. I haven't even moved the bulk of the heliconias out of the garage yet because well, what's the point? They're just going to be mad at me if I bring them out and they're going from cold to hot to cold to hot. So I figure they can just stay inside for right now. Hope y'all don't mind that I'm watering and doing yard work during the garden tour, but just don't really have a choice. There's only so many hours in the day and I'm spending the majority of it watering plants. So figure may as well multitask, probably a gardener if you're watching this video. So I'm sure you understand. Hydrangeas, they're starting to bloom and look really nice. These are the blue jingles. They're a proven winner hydrangea. It's a big leaf hydrangea that just blooms and blooms and blooms on old and new wood, which is a game changer when it comes to the macrophyllas to the big leaf hydrangeas. They're very thirsty plants. I cannot wait to get these in the ground so I'm not watering them as often. Anything in a container, you know, you gotta water it way, way, way more than you do some of the other plants. These are going to go up in the dump garden, <laughs> which I'll move over to that area and show it to everybody next since I've been talking about some other things in that area. Go ahead and give the heliconias a drink first. They don't really seem to need it. Their soil's holding on to moisture pretty well, but I'm right here, so figure it may as well. These are the Chaconianas, Cideracorum type heliconias. I ordered these from Nature's Hills, Nature Hills Nursery, pardon the shadow. It's the only way I can seem to pull this off. After about five minutes, the camera just overheats and I have to start over because now when the camera's overheating, it's for some reason, deleting my files, which it didn't used to do. So that's a fun change. Out here walking around with an umbrella and a tripod, looking like a weirdo. I'm sure my neighbors are going, what the f is this guy up to? This queen palm, that was something I'd started to talk about while I was down there. I'm thinking about pulling the curcuma clump that's over there and getting ready to start going and putting it in here in the front of this planter that has this queen palm in it. Very large queen palm. Okay, umbrella, get back, get out of the shot. Yeah, nice big, done a lot of growing, big happy, queen palm. I have two sun impatience on the sides just to fill in for color. For the front, I put two of these super tunia persimmons. I talked about those in the last video. I was at the Home Depot and saw them and really liked them. So of course, naturally, I bought 10. Thought it'd be fun to try something that's different out here. Not, you know, the super, the Vista bubble gums, they're everywhere. I have, there's one right next to me. Beautiful plants. I love the Vista bubble gums. They're vigorous and fantastic, but there's a nice color variants here with the persimmons that corally apricot pink with the yellow in the middle i like it it's something different not going to get as big but that's okay i still think it'll be fun to try in the middle here this is maybe a bad idea we'll just all wait and find out together this is a musa florida i have a few of these that i'm going to be planting around in various containers and in spots in the yard this year just to kind of look at the variance between how they're growing how they're performing based on their location the soil type moistures that fun stuff it had some issues coming out from well not really coming out from tissue culture that's always something that takes a while and some patience but really getting it hardened off and bring it outside i talked about the up and down temperatures and everything that was going on there but Putting out a new leaf, which I'm not gonna open up. I was hoping it would be open for the video. You can see there's a little bit of irrigation on it. We'll just have to wait and see what happens with it. I do have some verbena that I'd like to plant in the front here. I think that'd be a nice color and a nice texture. And that curcuma, I also think might look nice coming up over here. I wouldn't put it over here, but there are a bunch of caladiums from last year that are looking like they're going to pop up in this location. And I still have some of those Colocasia tropical storms 
which I may pop down in that spot as well. Ugh, these shadows. Well, hey, at least the camera's not overheating. We can live with it. Queen Palm is doing a good job providing some shade, so it's given me some small areas to bring some of the aeroids out to get them going. I have the elbow back there in the corner. I have the VGI and the Warwickianum back there. I'll try and get a better shot, but they're really tucked far away back behind that windmill palm. Oh, and these are those tropical storm colocasias. I had gotten these with the intention of putting them all around the pool, and then there's the, there's the whole thing. I have four extra because what I wanted to do with them isn't going to work out. So here they are. I do you think a couple of those might look nice in here as well to the back? So that they'll be coming up and out of those sun patients with the ginger in the front, some verbena, caladiums. It might contrast a little bit, but whatever, it's fine. And I'll probably stick those other two on each side of that orange sun patient that's right there once I lift that ginger out, and then I'll have space for both of those. It's a color case I'm pretty excited about because it's supposed to stay smaller, has neat looking foliage on it. It's going to have a good contrast with everything over there, and especially because I think I'm going to leave two of the heliconias over here. Those hydrangeas, they're going over the dump garden. We'll talk about that in a minute. I have some containers that match these big boy ones that are smaller, and they're the perfect fit for these heliconias right here. So I could put one on each side of this container and then have those nice orange blooms coming up with the red of the gingers and all that color around it. I think that'll look nice. Hard to tell right now because, you know, everything's a mess right now. I haven't bothered cleaning the spot up yet because I'm thinking I need to pull everything out. Pull it way out from this retaining wall that's back here and do a big cleaning back here. A year or so ago, I made this a potting area or a place to store my smaller pots and I've decided that that's dumb and I need to change it. Because all summer long, I can't get to them. This, everything from right over here where that bird cage is and down just becomes full of plants. So what's the point of having a storage area for pottery if you can't even, you can't even get to them. That's dumb. And it makes it harder to keep all the leaves and debris out from this is all drainage down here. So it's harder to keep all the leaves and debris out of there. And that's important for insect control. We have these gnats out here that bite and you swell up and it itches and it burns. So the more cleanliness that's back behind everything, the better. Also makes sense because now there's more of a view than there used to be with this adenidia palm, which I haven't even shown. I talked about the bottom of it. <laughs> I haven't showed you all the top. With this adenidia palm here, you can see right through back there. So if you're standing up and looking at it in person, you can see all the stuff that's back there. And I just, it's not a vibe that I'm enjoying. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that. And while I'm at it and I have these plants pulled out, I also think it would be a good idea to do some landscaping up here on this hill. I have a bunch of euonymus up here that I transplanted from the berm down the other side of the year, that, that was last year. I had some major winter damage from those freezes back in December. And they're coming back, but I think that putting some of the hills I use up here, they're a nice columnar U, hardy to zone four, sturdy, reliable, and I think they're selected as male, so won't produce berries. I don't really care if they produce the berries, but there's some toxicity to the entire plant. So not having berries is one less thing to worry about as far as the animals eating them. Birds seem to enjoy them, but the dogs and whatnot, they've never bothered any of my ewes in the front yard, and they're out there all the time. But just to be safe, the hills eye over the hicks eye. Hicks eye is similar to the hills eye ewe, another columnar ewe that gets taller than the hills eye does, but I don't think that'd be necessary here because they only need to get like eight feet tall max, and that, that would really shield things off. There'd be a nice green wall, a nice fluffy green textured wall and they're cheap. You can get decent sized ones for starters for like 30, 40 bucks. I think that's the way to do it. So do a row of green back there, probably plop some annuals in here and set up a nice area for the shade loving or filtered light loving aeroids and try and make it look nice. Always a struggle that I have when I move the plants out for the summertime. There's so many tiny plants that I get thrown off with trying to make things look nice out here and not cluttered and then having tons of plants on little pots. I think that that would be a good area to do that. And I have Mr. set up over here from when I used to have Vandacious orchids that would hang over here when this area got more sun. And the aeroids would probably really enjoy that. That was all just an explanation as to why the glider's out there and things are just in disarray. It's because I keep crawling back there every day and doing a few more things to get that project started. The dump garden, that would be this area back here. Everything up there on the wall. I have four big arbs that are ready to go into the ground. Two of the Espolar apples, Espolier, <laughs> Espolar? Espolier apples. There's a Gala and a Honeycrisp, I believe are the two that are over here. 
there's some irises that are going to be going in the ground, some lavenders, things for color and texture to attract the pollinators and feed the pollinators. It's just this whole area is where I'm going to be sticking plants that I want to grow, but they aren't going to work either aesthetically or practically as far as their growing preferences in the main garden. I also have four more arbs ready to be moved over into this area. Those should all be in the ground. Everything over here should be in the ground in a couple of weeks. And this is where those, uh, the, oh, I keep on saying endless summer. That's not what they are. The uh, blue jangles, that's what it is. The blue jangles, hydrangeas will be going up here too. Not a native. I didn't tell y'all that I try and put native. Well, it doesn't matter. I do try and intermingle a lot of natives up here but y'all didn't know that, so I didn't need to specify that it's not a native. It will add color that I really enjoy having that's not going to work. In the rest of the garden, you can see this area gets good morning filtered light. It's starting to get shaded now, but as we move into the afternoon, they think that the hydrangeas should be shaded enough to do okay. I already have a couple of hydrangeas up here that I need to cut out and remove. They're just really old school macrophyllas, and the spot's kind of exposed right there. The wind blows through. That might get better as the arbs grow but they've been dying back to the ground every winter and then the flowering of course is very sparse if at all because of that because they only bloom on old wood because they're one of the older varieties that's why i'm pulling them out and changing things up over here we're okeanum hanging out with the vici just like let's <laughs> see every spot of shade i can find just directly behind that palm trunk i'm using it because these are plants i definitely don't want to have damage as they come out but they have I expected that with the Warwickiana. Queen Anthurium is just, it's one of those plants. I've accepted it. It's not one of my favorites, and I knew that might be a thing when I got it. Vici, though, the king down here with all the little ripples on it. Excellent. Great plant. Loving it. Really enjoying it. It's just, it's a trooper. That's been a great plant. Oh, and the Fort McNair chestnut. Got that in the ground a few days ago. Over here in the ground, got a nice little well dug out for it. This will fill up like an umbrella and this big open area provides some more shade for the lawn and just, it'll just be beautiful. Beautiful pink flowers in the spring, early to get going too. So it's not like a lot of the other plants I have over here. There are Rose of Sharon's, uh, Hibiscus Syracuse over there that are much later to get going. Things have to warm up and they're still getting going and it's been long enough. We've had mild temperatures long enough. Those should be up and going. They'll flush out earlier than everything else, which I like. There's also a red bud over here that there's not much to show with it right now. But that's that Carolina Sweetheart that I got last year that's planted up here in the edge of this garden bed. And a banana transplant that's not, it's not loving life. I didn't expect it to. I just thought I'd give it a shot over here, but this spot does not have ideal soil. It is like digging in cement, trying to get things in the ground. It took me an hour and a half to get that little banana planted in that spot. It's the only spot that works, so I gave it a shot. There's a different view of the Eureka Palm. Y'all never get to see. I have a yucca just sitting in its pot right there. <laughs> It's over here by the wall because over here by the wall is where I'm doing repots. But this is so nice. It's a little bit harder to work with the tripod, but the umbrella up here, this umbrella though, game changer. It's, oh, nope, nope, it's falling over. Spoke too soon, have to hold the camera with one hand and the umbrella with the other, which sort of defeats the purpose. But hey, I've talked for like 20 minutes now and it hasn't overheated. This is nice. Yeah, this is the repot area. I'm mixing up my soil and the gorilla card. Mostly all-purpose potting mix with some cotton burr compost, sand, all-purpose fertilizer, those sorts of things, slow release that is. Nice, rich, and airy with some good moisture retention. I have learned over the years that I, I'm a big advocate for drainage, 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 drainage. Some of my plants, I have realized that I have gone overboard with the drainage and I'm paying for it. I'm having trouble keeping them hydrated. And that's partially because of the mix I was using. I wasn't mixing my own stuff the last few years and what I was using just doesn't hold on to moisture the way I would like it to. I'm talking specifically about these mule palms. There's one right here and then one over there. They're both recovering from some crown rot, some cold damage. They're coming out from it looking good, but watering them, it's, I'm not gonna say it's pointless. They have to be watered but it's moving through those pots so fast and then I can stick my fingers down in there an hour later and they're bone dry. So I'm probably going to be repotting those. The banana is also going to be getting a repot because it's in that same mix. It's just drying and draining way too quickly. And then the variegated sea hibiscus. This is one of my favorites. I love this plant and they should be fast growers, but same problem. Cannot keep the thing hydrated and that potty mix that it's in. So doing things this way has slowed down the process of getting all of the plants moved out here and put where I want them to be. But I think in the long run, it's just the way to do it. Last year, the drip was running it seemingly all day to keep things watered. And that's because the water is just moving right through that soil way too quickly and there wasn't any retention. So yeah, it's more work and it's messy. I'm not getting to jump right into summer and things looking great as fast as I would like to, but 
I think it's going to make for a much nicer summer not having to water absolutely nonstop and being able to use the drip how it's supposed to be used. One of the reasons people use drip is for water conservation, but if it has to run for like an hour at a time, twice a day, that's not really working, right? I think that's defeating the purpose. Don't need to go in all that. It's not like soapboxy time here. I'm just saying, I'm trying to correct some uh, problems from the past and make things easier moving forward this summer. I did plant up the uh, deck planters. Of course, all the flowers are facing away from the camera and I piled stuff up in front of it. Let me see if I can get over there. I'll bring this forward. See, I'm gonna look at it. Doesn't that look nice? Hibiscus tricolor, also known as or similar to the Tequila Sunrise and the uh, Love on the Beach S ends with an X on the beach. That's the name for that one. Don't want to risk saying it on YouTube, not trying to lose my monetization. They're picky about those things. So I have one of those in the center of each of these planters. I specifically went with this hibiscus. Let me get it back over here so you can see it again. I'm gonna talk about it, may as well show it in all of its glory. I specifically went with this hibiscus because it's one that blooms prolifically. Most of the ones we get from the big box stores should have a couple months of pretty prolific blooms on them because they're induced to do so why when you buy them you get tons of blooms and then next year not so much because you haven't been soaking them and spraying them down with hormones right probably not most people aren't doing that even outside of the phase where they've been covered in <laughs> things to trigger them into blooming they're reliable bloomers so i thought that that would make a good centerpiece for these containers and the size hot coral sun patients with the persimmon super tunias in there and in this one i did a creeping jenny in the middle <laughs> Then the other one I did is sweet potato vine. I know, that's a weird thing to do. Well, here's what happened though. I planted up that one first, and then I was thinking about, I was like, I think I'd actually like a sweet potato vine in the front of these more. So I did that over here and I'm looking at it and I'm going, yep, mm -hmm, that was the right call. So I just need to pull that sweet, or the creeping Jenny out of that one, swap it out with an Ipomia so that they match. That's all there is to that story. I like creeping Jenny, but I think I'm going to like the way an Ipomia comes out with more abundance instead of laying flat, where it's, I think the creeping Jenny will get lost and hidden in there, whereas this will be nice and fluffy and be able to see the colors from the Super Tunia Persimmon mixed in there. I think that'll look good. And I was really excited to be, God, it's such a mess. This is embarrassing, but it's just, it's reality. It's what's going on out here. Lots of projects. I'm excited to be able to put hibiscus in these planters. The past few years, I haven't, well, I've been putting sun-loving plants in them. It hasn't been going very well because the maple tree was shading things in this spot quite a bit, but I don't see any reason why these should not get enough sun to just flower and flower and flower this year. They should do really well over here. So it'll be nice to not have sun loving plants in these or even like I did some what was it last year? What were they? The sapphire gecko colocasias, which can take afternoon shade, especially when they're surrounded by concrete and heat. It's good for afternoon shade. But they were still growing wonkily and wonkily and uneven because this side is much more shaded than that side which is why there's only one areca palm out here i have matching planters on each side which you can't tell because i have plants that need repots piled up in front of them but eventually there just was enough sun over here for the other areca palm so got rid of it because it was taking up too much space and now well here we are it doesn't matter in a few years the maple will be big again and we'll be shading everything as much as i would like for there to be that symmetry here remember all this stuff in the front that's not staying here I'll be redoing all that to make this look a lot better when I'm done with my repots here. But uh, having something that matches would be ideal, but I've just grown to accept that that's not gonna happen. So I'll probably stick an evergreen shrub over here on this side, maybe an arb. They're pretty cheap, might throw one of those in there. I'm trying to get more evergreens out here, provide more year round interest since the winter and fall seasons have become much longer and the plants are inside much longer than they used to be. I would like for things to be pleasant all year instead of just bear from October all the way until April. That's not fun. Or really May. April-ish because I've been slowly adding more evergreens, but not enough. So that's a big thing I'm working on this year. That's why I was talking about the ewes for up there on the hill, have all these arbs to go over here. Plants that flush out earlier in the season, like the buckeye that's over there, that Fort McNair chestnut. Not evergreen, but don't have to wait until May or June, like with the hibiscus syracuse, to get some foliage on them what else what's what else is going on out here i just learned a fun lesson apparently when you have an umbrella on your tripod if you lift too much from the base because of the extra weight it pulls the battery pack just a little bit from your camera 
and you lose everything you've been doing while we record. That's fun. This is nice. Always fun learning things. I love learning. I'm just going to recap it all. This hibiscus here, don't know what it is. The pot says tricolor, which is what the container said for the two that are up there. Obviously, these are not the same plants, but this one, whatever it is, it's been growing like a champ, really flowering like a champ, just nonstop for the last week and a half, blooms and blooms in blooms. It has a sprawly shape to it, more like a Cajun hibiscus. It's not a Cajun, but it has that kind of awkward shape to it that a lot of them do. It's a nice vibrant pink of some kind. It's one of those cool tropic ones that you find at the big box stores. What does it say down here? Summer breeze, tropical breeze, hibiscus. So finding the name for it actually shouldn't be that difficult because they sell these in the little pots like just teeny tiny ones for you to use as fillers in your containers. So could always keep an eye out for those at the big box stores. It's probably one of those palm trees looking great. Queen palms, just being queen palms. They're already starting to fluff out and open up some fronds that they had in the middle. The spears that were in there, and they look okay. So it should fill out nicely. They better fill out nicely because they need to, to shade this area. It's very hot over here. The pygmy date palm. It's okay treating it for some things that it came back from the greenhouse with. We deal with that every year, and it's just part of the process. That's why I haven't planted anything underneath it yet, because I'm hitting it with neem and soap and all that stuff to be safe. I'm like, it's only going to be another week or so. I'll just move the baskets when I do the sprays, and when I'm done with that, I'll get the impatient and the dragon's wing begonia potted up in there. With the Robolini palm, the croton. <laughs> Lost a lot of leaves when I moved it outside. Always does. Not a big deal. See all the green stuff? It's flushing out. It's going to look great here pretty soon. Last night, I moved these plants over here, trying to prep for the garden tour. Yeah, believe it or not, I actually was trying to prepare and make things look nice. Everything you've seen is an improvement over the gardening balm that happened last week when the palm trees got delivered a week early. It was a, it's the whole thing. I don't feel like talking about all that. It's nice that they're here. I'm happy the palm trees are back. I moved the Robolini palm over here, which is where I've always kept it, for the last several years anyways, right here in this corner, and it, it doesn't fit. And I was like, well, what's that about? Why doesn't it fit? It took me probably 20 minutes to remember, oh yeah, I repotted the croton. That is in a very large pot now. So I should probably find a different place to keep that. The only place that I've been able to think of, and this has only been going through my head for like the last half an hour here and there between filming, uh, maybe back here behind this Adenidia palm. The problem with that though is this Hidichium, this uh, the Flaming Torch Hidichium, that gets very large and it's just going to end up blocking. I wouldn't be able to see it and that's a gorgeous plant. I've had it for a long time. It's done a lot of growing. I don't want it to be hidden away. So I'm going to be thinking about some different areas to move that croton to. That way things will hopefully fit more nicely over in this corner here. Over here, underneath the adenidia palm, which is looking great. I think I need to give it a twist though. See how the trunk has a bend to it and it's bending like this. If I twist it, then it will bend out like that. That would look a lot better. Haven't underplanted it yet because I noticed that curve in it yesterday. So I wanna get it turned properly before I underplant it. I filled this area up with some beautiful sun patience this spring, you know, I don't know, a month ago. Did orange pink, orange pink right here and then a huge row of them down over there. And I have some Tredescantia and Nanooks there that I was going to put in the front. I realize though that I have, I have to move it all. All of these have to be moved because I remembered that I got those Heliconias so I could plant a row of Heliconias behind the Sun Patients. So the Sun Patients needed to go further down on the slope right here, which was another reason that I wasn't going to plant the Tredescantia, but then some of the Tredescantia Nanooks from last year overwintered and they're coming up right there. Pretty surprising for zone six, considering how cold it was last winter or just really for a few days in December. Cold enough to take out a laurel hedge, but apparently not the Tradescantias. So I'm going to be coming in here, taking all these and moving them forward about a foot. So there'll be more on this curve here, which is hard to see in video, but there's a curve. And then there'll be a row of Heliconias behind that. Won't that look just beautiful? I'm so excited. I've wanted to do that for years, but I've been stuck in this trend of put doing sun patients with some sort of crawler trailer in the front, whether it be Lantana or the uh, Tredescantia Nanux or just the regular Pelletas. I think that this will look really nice. And if there's still room, I can throw some of the Nanux in there. If not, no big deal. I'll put them over the front of some containers. They're fun to have around. I remembered this when I was getting ready to pop this Chinese fan palm in the ground. I like it here. I think that this looks good. I like when I come out of the house, like that's it. This is good. I like that way that comes over the corner. 
it looks nice. But I had been debating putting a Heliconia there. Then I remembered, well, wait, no, I was going to put Heliconias here. This is doing a good job of covering up the pot so it's not quite as fake looking. When you can see the containers, it does kind of throw things off some. So that's going to stay there. I'll get that in the ground. I have a Limezinger Xanthosoma to come up the front there. One of my favorites of the Xanthosomas. Well, really, of all Acacias, call Acacias of the elephant ears. Limezingers, just fun looking. They have great arrowy shaped, heart shaped leaves, and the color on them is just fantastic. I also need to move these forward because I have an Alpinia that I wanted to plant over here where this orange one is. So they're just, I forgot a lot of stuff when I planted this area. That happens, you know, when you're waiting for plants to come in the mail and I can't actually see them to work with them. And then I just have little hiccups like this. Not a big deal, so early in the season, they should transplant fine. If not, it's okay. They're just sun impatience, cut them back, give them time. They will recover over here. I'm still working on pulling mulch. I used so much mulch over here last year. I want to say more than I probably needed to. However, that cold we had, I'm glad that I did use this much mulch. I went over the top and, but now I don't, I have so much that I have to get spread. I already sold the gorilla cart twice. This is gonna be the third load and then I'm still working my way to the back to get the rest of it out of there. But definitely made a dent in it. Hopefully by this weekend, I'll have that out of here since it's garden beds more buttoned up and put together. There's the row of the sun impatience that I was talking about that I put out front here. The bikini teeny colocasias used to be what I allowed to grow in the front here. Well, not what I allowed, it's just where they volunteered themselves. However, if you look around this garden bed, you see in all of them, no shortage of the bikini teeny colocasias. So the ones that come up in the front, I'm just gonna be plucking them and pulling them and letting them do their thing in the back of the garden instead of having giant four to five foot tall elephant ears right in the front. I'd rather see this nice colorful border. We got a lot of weeding to do too. Been slacking, doing all the stuff with the annuals. There's a tomato coming up there and I might just leave it. Why not? I mean, I know I just said not to have big things grow in the front of the garden, but I didn't really plant any this year. So this could be fun. Who knows what type it is? No way to know. Hopefully not one that gets really, really big. It would make more sense to go ahead and pluck that, pull it and tuck it back there, which is more than likely what I will end up doing. The Baju bananas looking great. I finally got the irrigation up and running over here, which has been off for a couple of years because of a bus pipe that was down there. I got that pipe fixed. Irrigation company came out to make some repairs and I was like, yeah, that's gonna cost a lot. Let me see if I can fix it. And I was able to. I'm really happy about that. However, they still came out to do some work on some things and now this zone doesn't work. So I'm now looking for a new irrigation company because it's just constant back and forth and not getting things done the way they need to be done. And if I can do it in like 40 minutes, when, why are you gonna charge me $1,300 to change out a head and rebury a line? I don't think so, I know how to use a shovel. All that being said, the Bajus, they're enjoying having irrigation again. They were all up on drip last year, which was fine, but again, Anytime drip was running over here, that meant it couldn't be running somewhere else because I have really bad water pressure. So only one zone can run at a time, even though they're from different outlets on the house. This area comes from an outlet over here and everything else over there comes from an outlet wrapped around the other side of the house. So just not enough water pressure. So this is nice. It's something to take some of the pressure off of the drip. And uh, that is proving to be something that the bananas are enjoying. This area, all new, this got planted up a few weeks ago, filled the front of this area with the Eucamus bicolor sparkling burgundy, which had this beautiful red foliage on them. Hopefully <laughs> they're going to be getting enough sun to actually stay upright and hold their flowers upright. Now that the Alexander palm is here and just looking great, loving the Alexander palm. It is, as you can see, there's the sun and <laughs> here's all this stuff I planted thinking, oh, I finally have sun over here. No. Now it's getting some shade now, but only for part of the day, the hotter part of the day, which is probably for the best. The insets are back there anyways, these inset Morellii. You can see, look, scorching. Look at that. See that? That's all just from the sun being so intense and the air being so dry. I think we're gonna be getting rain here in a day or so, and that should make a really big difference. I hope we need some humidity so that the plants aren't cooking quite as much. There's a Leucocasia in the front, has some dieback on it, but I'm not shocked by that given what it's had to deal with for the past few weeks. You can see it, I can't see my view. Yeah, there it is. That'll grow up over the front of everything. The dune grass will fill in here and have that blue and the red and the green and the red. Gonna look nice. I know it's banana on banana, but whatever, it's fine. I want it to be that way so these sides would match that banana on banana over here. 
this is the only container, this and the Ed and Idia, those are the only ones I haven't gotten to yet when it comes to putting the uh, impatience down below into their containers that won't be long until I have that done. Pharaoh's Mask Colocasia is coming up from their winter rest, looking pretty good. And oh, there's blooms back here on the Italian Ice Oh So Easy Rose. Love this one. Planted these a few years ago. They start off kind of a white and then they go yellow and then they have this pinkish color on them. Most luminous, very pretty. Okay, and then down here, lots of impatience were planted and lots of impatience were dug up and run over by the dogs and by the squirrels. So I have to do some filling in down here. Kind of expected that to be the case. This whole area is basically bare because the dogs were running in and out and in and out and in and out. So I need to fix that. And then I'll put the wire bells over the tops of the new ones so that they cannot run through them and trample them. They'll be able to get a better start. And the Zingibers, they're coming up. I was really worried about these. It was a bad winter and I would have been super bummed if those hadn't made it because they don't do much for the first couple years, the Zingiber Myogas. They tend to just sit still, especially the first year. The second year, you get something out of them. The third year is when you start to see an explosion in their growth and this would be the third year. So if those hadn't come back, I was gonna be bummed. Those were just planted from little four inch containers and it went the uh, silver arrow, which is, I don't think you'll be able to see the variegation on these at this size. They have a very light variegation. Now you can't really see it. And the uh, white feather, I believe are dancing. No, I think white feather, which is another zingiber that just has more variegation on it. You can kind of see it on this one right here that gets more and more abundant as the plant grows, but it takes them a few years to get big enough to even be able to appreciate that. So from those little four inch pots, those have, you can see, really done a good amount of spreading, but there are some bare spots. Hopefully those will fill out this year. If not, it's okay, because look at all these, can divide and replant next year if that's the case. There's even one coming up over here, one of the silver arrows that I did not plant any of them over here, not even close to this vicinity. I stopped with planting them right here. So uh, that's weird to me. I was thinking that maybe there are these bare spots over here because of sun. You can see there's more sun over there than over here. Wouldn't explain why this one, it's almost in the pure shade is coming up. So I think it's just cold patches or you know, maybe ground squirrels chewing on them. I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm just happy they're coming back. This whole area has been doing pretty well for the most part, Time Traveler Hosta doing so well this year. Look at it. These nice big leaves. This is planted at the same time as those gingers were roughly, at least in the same year. And again, just a little pot, one that's slow to get going, one that's very slow to multiply and form a nice clump. This is its third year of growing, and I'm glad to see that it's putting out some nice big leaves. I love the variegation. The color of green on the leaves with the variegation in the middle. It's just a neat looking hosta. Not thrilled that this one came up without any variegation, but the one that's coming up from down below does have some in there. Otherwise, I was going to cut that out. It's not one that's known for reverting, but it's also not a super common one. So that could have been the case. I don't know if it is. I don't think it is. Only because the new growth is coming up with some variegation on it. Begonia grandis, the pink teardrops. Right here, right here, right here, right here. That should fill in this area nicely. If it's getting enough sun. I think it is, but I'm not positive. Okay, and now... The thing that I don't want to talk about, the laurel hedge. Also, this whole area was filled with impatience and the dogs trampled through most of them. I don't understand what, last year they didn't do that. I did the same thing last year, they did not trample through the impatience. And this year they just went through and destroyed almost all of them. It's a good thing that I bought extras because I'm going to have to redo this. Well, I'm gonna to have to redo this regardless because I gave it the time necessary to see what was gonna come back and what wasn't from that horrible cold snap where we went from being in the 70s to being negative six degrees back in December. The laurels, apparently, not a fan of that. This one right here, completely dead. That's going to go, I'm going to be removing this and the one that's next to it and doing arbs right here. They're not gonna do much growing with the shade here, but they'll provide some evergreen privacy and cap things off. Because the laurels, you can see they have grown up at an angle towards where there's the most sun. So in this shadier spot down here, no reason to replant them. They didn't do much growing here anyways. So that's gonna go. That one, I'm gonna cut it back. There's some growth coming out the bottom. Maybe I'll move the root ball somewhere else. And why well, don't I'm wasting my time here. The whole hedge is going, all of it's going. I have a, a new plan. You can probably see it in the video. It's probably been in clips and it's probably parts of it that are <laughs> sticking out where you can see what's going to happen. Why I'm not all that concerned about the impatience. I was really excited about all the ones that I had planted here and how beautiful that was going to be. 
but uh, this, these are all going to have to go. And I have a feeling in the process of taking out this entire 18 foot, I believe, is how long this is, 18 to 20 foot hedge here, things are going to end up getting trampled. I'm also going to be building the berm up higher and moving it back some and then putting two more arbs on that end and doing a fresh set of laurels here in the front. Not ideal, but it's just, it's what happened. There's a closer look at the inflorescence on the Alexanders. Wasn't able to show that in the last video because I didn't come down here, but look at those. Isn't that fun? Nice and happy <laughs> for the most part. You know, they go from the greenhouse to being out here in the sun. They go through some shock. That's pretty normal. Hydrangea planters. These are, the, I am loving these this year. Electric orange sun patient with purple candy mountain sun and patient. It's really hard to see. Can y'all see it? I can't see my viewfinder. I don't think you can see it. There we go. That's better. I love the way these two look together. I did an ipomia on each side. Just a Carolina sweetheart, sweetheart lime, carrot, whatever. One of the proven winners. Sweet potato vines with the nice heart-shaped leaves on each side of the containers. Traditionally in these pots I have done a lot of petunias and then sometimes these sweet potato vines as well. I decided this year to just do two sweet potato vines as far as trailers are concerned because I want to be able to appreciate the pottery. These big blue pots, they're absolutely beautiful and I don't want to hide them and I like the way the green looks against them. When I have planted them all the way around it's too much so just a couple keeping it kind of simple but not really because there's a lot going on up here and then there'll be even more once these hydrangeas start to go and do their thing. These are the vanilla strawberry hydrangeas and they are getting very, very big. Every year bigger and bigger from that end to this end. Probably about seven foot, I would say. It's, these are, they're big. Very big hydrangeas. Paniculatas, fun to have around. In the middle of these containers, I also put two of the Colocasia tropical storms. Hey, uh, starting to get some variegation. It would have been nice a week ago when I was filming that video, but that's all right. Talked about in the video where I was discussing these colocasias about how I love having colocasias in these containers, but they end up being too much. And I wanted a dwarf variety that wasn't the Falifax because those don't always do the best with a lot of sun and they tend to be more pricey. And that's when I found these, the tropical storms. So I have much more variegation on them as they get bigger. They shouldn't get any bigger than 24 to 30 inches. So they'll be like right around here. It's not going to be so much that it's just overtaking the containers and throwing things off. I think those are a good option for the bottom of these two containers. Crinum lily, look at that. So big, so happy, that's the Persephone. Love that one. Every year I say this, because it's true, I need to divide this. And I just always forget, and I never get down to it at the right time of year. It's tricky because it's not hardy here. I, well, I think it might be listed as a 6B, so technically it is hardy here, but it's a risky one. You know what I mean? Like it may survive, maybe not. It's been close to a decade I've had this though, so clearly it's going to survive. I'm thinking early spring, like right when they start to move, might be the best time to divide them. So next year I will try and remember that. I wouldn't want to do it in the fall because of it being a marginally hardy. I want them to have a full season to root out and be nice, healthy plants before they have to deal with any cold winter temperatures. That's why. So I haven't done it because I've forgotten. Here we are. Hey, at least I got those eucamus divided. All those pineapple lilies I was talking about down there, the sparkling burgundies, those were a big clump right here in the front that were just not really doing great. They did a lot of growing, but they got too shaded from the bananas where they were right around here and never got to really appreciate the flowers. Forgot to talk about the banana cannas. Well, that's not much, there they are. It's not much to say. They're growing. They're getting huge. I need to thin them out from the front because they're going to shade out the gingers that are in the back. There are Hedichiums throughout here. Flaming Torch and Elizabeth are the only ones that came back this year. And only on this side. None of the gingers that were over here, because this was gingers throughout this whole space. None of the ones on this side came back. There might maybe be one starting to pop up from back there inside of the cannas, but the ones that were right here and right there nothing. I forgot to talk about the magnolia, teddy bear magnolia. Or no, not little gem, not teddy bear. This was its first winter and it really had to go through it. A couple limbs died off that I'm going to have to cut off, but it is starting to flush out and put out new growth, which is a huge relief because I just wasn't sure because sometimes the magnolia will sit around all spring or the majority of spring and look completely fine. And then the leaves will start to drop from whatever the heck it went through in the winter time and it's just not being able to get the energy and the juice up to maintain what it has going and push out new growth. So seeing new growth, very reassuring, has lots of flower buds on there too. That's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna smell amazing, kind of thin and sparse, but 
it's alive, which I was not expecting <laughs> to be the case. I didn't think that that was going to make it. I amended it with a good amount of holly tone in the spring, and I had been fertilizing it. I think that that may have made a difference because it was just sitting still and not looking great for probably the last eight weeks. The leaves were starting to brown and curl and fall off and it wasn't pushing out when it should have been. It's a little late to the game for pushing out. I'll take it, at least it's doing it. Okay, the palms that are over, no, we'll do that last. Not trying to be a tease, just I wanna stand in the shade for the end of the video and the shade's over there by those palm trees. All that's left over here, the two Miami planters, those got potted up with these double trunked adenidia palms, pardon the background noise from the fountain. It's just, this noisy back here, so much noise. Love these pots, want to do something really special with them. I got the Musa Floridas to put into these containers and decided not to use those because, well, one, I found these for a great deal at the Home Depot and uh, they just hadn't done enough growing yet. I figured that they would end up being choked out probably by the sun impatience or whatever fillers I was going to put in here. And I think that this was the right move. They look fantastic, they're beautiful. There's Cordo and Fredacasa in the back, Creepin' Jenny over the front, no flowers as the trailers, just nice, green, simple, something that's going to be easy to keep clipped out and managed. There's one on each side, one in the front, so you can still see the beautiful ripples on those pots. I didn't want to hide those ripples. I also popped some uh, Super Tunia, no, Super, but Vista bubble gums in the front of this garden bed up here. I have been slowly adding soil to each side up here, adding compost, getting mulch up here because this area from there and down and from here and over are being landscaped sometime in the next few weeks. Really, once I move through the annuals and the tropicals and all the repots, I'm gonna be focusing much more on the perennials because you can work through that all summer as long as it's not too terribly hot. Gotta get the annuals in the containers first. So that's why those things haven't been done yet, but I've been slowly preparing the area to get moving with that. I have a couple hydrangeas over here that aren't really doing anything, but hopefully when the irrigation situation's fixed, those will start to look better. It's really hard to get down here in water. So that's a big priority is getting somebody out here who will actually fix the irrigation. There's, this is something that will help. There is a Paris K Magnolia back there. Just a twig. Got that last year from uh, uh, Stark Brothers. Got a couple of them from Stark Brothers last year and they are looking good considering they were just sticks. Finally pruned the Japanese maple bonsai. <laughs> Talk about it in every video for like the last year. Then I forget to give it a heavy prune. That got a nice cut back. So it's looking pretty good. Okay, what's left? Oh, there's a closer look at the Tahitian flame Hidichium. It's gonna be hard to get a good shot of it, but it's just a variegated Hidichium, a variegated ginger that I'm so excited about having growing over here. Gotta admit though, that'd be the perfect spot for the croton, wouldn't it? But I don't wanna move it because I didn't think it was even gonna survive there. That was just a pipe dream when I threw it there. I don't wanna mess with the good thing, so I'll just figure something else out. Stable miner in this corner, it's got a bloom coming up. Very surprised by that because I didn't even think it was a sable miner. I ordered it as a palmetto when it was a tiny little thing, but the more it's grown, I've gone, uh-huh, that's definitely not a palmetto. It means when you order plants off eBay sometimes, it was just a little strap leaf when I put it in the ground. So this is like six years in the making. It's not the right plant, but that's okay. Sable miners are great. I love them. They're fun to have around. Same with the needle palms. They seem very happy right now. They, I think they're just about done, but they did have some blooms on them on the inside to get down on the ground and try and find them so you can see them. Yeah, look at that. Lots and lots of stuff going on in there covered in them. All around the bases on both of them. Lots and lots and lots of flowers. Happy plants, that's what you like to see, especially after a record-breaking freeze, right? Minus six degrees for a few days. Had them covered with lights on them, so I didn't really think they would die, but just wasn't sure, and it would, that would have been devastating. I would have been so sad if those hadn't made it because needle palms grow like snails and they're very expensive to replace if you want to replace them in a larger size. Getting one in a 25 or a 30 gallon pot, which wouldn't even be as big as those are down there, would a few years ago would have cost like 700 bucks probably. I'm sure it'd be over a thousand now. So it would have been pretty bad if those had died, but they didn't so that we don't even need to talk about that. Let's focus on the positive. New palm trees for the pool planters. The triple trunk adenidias that normally go in these did not make it through the winter with the people who store the larger palms for me. That happens sometimes, adenidias. They can be pretty picky with their VPD about making sure that the lighting and humidity and the heat is just right. And they've been saying that they're struggling with the adenidias in their warehouse in the winter, which is not surprising because I've been struggling with them in the garage. Didn't used to be a problem, but I don't know, something over the last five years has 
different with them. I don't know if it has to do with ways they're being grown and brought up or what. I don't know. I don't know, but the smaller ones just don't do as well inside during the winter time. That's why I'm always pushing Alexander pumps on people. Tycosperma elegans, much better option. Much, much, much better option for people who need to move their palms in and out of the house. So they do grow very quickly. That was just like six to seven feet tall a few years ago. That's pretty big now. Use a crane to get it put in. So yeah, the Edenity has died and then they replaced them since it was on them that they died with these palms right here. And the person who brought them said that his dad, who's the owner of the company, said that they're quassia palms, Q-U-A-S-I-A. -S I Googled that, I could not, for the life of me, find anything. Dug through Palmpedia for a long time, trying to find a similar name, and I was like, this feels familiar. They have a similar appearance to a bottle palm, but they're definitely not a bottle palm. I was thinking maybe a pseudophoenix of some sort, but the characteristics with the fronds, leaflets, rachis, trunks and just all kinds of things just weren't matching up. And then I asked in the last video, hey guys, help me out. What do you, what do you think these are? And a couple of y'all came through. Gassia palm, G-U-A-S-S-I-A. -S -S that should have been very obvious, especially as I was digging through Palmpedia, which is like an encyclopedia of palm trees, and looking for names that looked similar to Quassia. I looked right over it, probably three or four times. And as soon as I read it, Gassia palm, I was like, yes. That's what these are. I was waiting to find out what these are before planting up the containers. I needed to know their preferences. What do they like? If they like things really dry, then I didn't want to plant a ton of annuals in these containers, right? If I did, they need to be things that can take some drought, like the Vinca. And then my brain started doing the thing where I was thinking about the different ways I can make these look nice without putting so many plants in the containers that it hides the trunks, because the trunks on these, they're just so cool. They have really neat trunks on them. I don't want to hide those behind sun patients. Those will get too big. You'll only be able to see the stuff out the top, which is not that impressive. They're, they're going through it, getting adjusted to being outside. Did repot them so they have fresh soil. Not a lot, like maybe a half an inch of fresh soil all the way around because that's bumped them from a 15 gallon container to another 15 gallon container that was just shaped slightly differently and more rigid. The ones these showed up and were busted to pieces. They had to get moved into something more sturdy. And what I decided to do here, trying to stay on track here, I've been talking for a long time, so the brain's starting to get scrambled. But instead of doing those big uh, showy annuals, to fill these mostly with soil, and then top dress them with some nice white sand, some shells, and do vinca, and uh, let the trunks stand up on their own. Vinca's not going to spread and go nuts. I'm talking about the cascading, the coras and the trailers that will come over the edge, and then some other fun things to go out. I don't want to ruin I'm not going to give you all the dates, but I have fun plans for these. I already picked up the bulk of the plants that I want to put in these containers. Just need to find the white sand. So I'm going to be on the hunt for that and hopefully can get these planted up for the weekend. And that's, that's where, this is where, where we're finished. Maybe, hopefully Saturday's video will be working on that. Probably moving some plants around and getting some heliconias in the ground and just making a dent, a big dent in the annuals because I need to move on with those. The sooner you get them planted, the more you can rely on them growing, right? They take some time to sit around and adjust to being planted before they really take off. So it's nice to have all that done before moving into summers that they have all season to grow and look wonderfully. And if you just leave in those little nursery cans for too long, they start to look like garbage. And I don't want to put plants in the containers, especially in videos that look like garbage. So the sooner the better. And it'll free up space in the patio and can get to bigger projects which i'm looking forward to this is going to be a fun one can't wait to get moving on that one hopefully tomorrow depending on the weather be able to watch that on saturday i hope everybody's doing well comment down below say hi i love talking to everybody thank you all for the help again with these palm trees gassia palm should have been obvious don't know why i overlooked that one just glad to know what they are now and uh, any suggestions for what i should plant up here Go ahead and let me know. There's already the red buds aren't staying. Those are volunteer red buds, but the euonymus, those need to be cut back. So there'll be a backdrop of yews, and then there's a variegated Virginia creeper on the fence. But otherwise, fun, shade loving evergreens that could go up there, let me know. I'm always open to suggestions and appreciate them. All right, hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. You done? You sleepy? You had enough turbo? Are you okay? Turbo, turbo, turbo.
my god, what's wrong with you? It really freaked me out there. I guess he was just zoned out. He's sopping wet. There's a fan and it's only 81 degrees outside. Trust me, he's fine. I don't know what that was about. He wasn't panting. He's good. Just as the afternoon sleepies, I think. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.